Guys, for all the solutions of this book, visit forthesakeofeducation.com. I've been working hard of putting all the problems into one convenient place for you to be able to do your homework easily. So pay us a visit. All right, guys, this is a problem that says determine the components of reaction that the thrust bearing A and cable BC exert on the bar. So whenever you have this problem, I always tell you the same thing. Draw the little map for the x y and c just somewhere on the side so it's easy to it's easy to do all the parts so now we know that this thrust bearing has a reaction in along the c and a reaction along the x but it doesn't have a reaction along the y so that's why we copy these two and this one has a reaction going straight up right here so we only have three variables. This is going to be a short problem. It just has one little trick that you got, or one little, let's call it trap, that, um, that it sets. But don't worry, I'll explain it to you. So this is our little um, chart that I like to build in this kind of problems lately. Now, first, you know that the sum of the forces in the C is equal to zero right seems to be the most obvious one since the forces there's a lot of forces going up or down so ac minus the ad uh, pound force being applied plus bc is all equal to zero so let's say ac plus bc is equal to ad call this equation one now i'm going to do some of the moments some of the moments to find the BC one and I can do some of the moments in the Y and you might be thinking oh, why don't we do some of the moments in the X well you gotta notice something if you do some of the moments in the X you know that AC and AX are not gonna be doing anything so so the, the only other two forces are the other ones but if you look at it, these two forces are not really creating any moment because the way the thrust bearing is set up, if one of the forces was to quote unquote beat the other, it would twist it either counterclockwise if it was the tension or clockwise if it was the, the force. So these two forces can't really create a moment along the, along the X and that's that little trap that I was telling you about so you can do some of the moments about the X so hopefully you guys understand that now what you can do is because you know this is um, this is uh, perfectly in perfectly static I mean after all this is statics you could do some of the moments about the Y assuming kind of clockwise is positive is equal to zero and you get that the 80 pound force times the distance from here to where it is applied which is 1.5 and it's negative because it's trying to turn the y-axis clockwise now bc times 3 y3 because that's the distance from here to here and it's trying to it's positive because it's trying to turn the y-axis counterclockwise and now we have only one variable in this equation which is bc and we solve for it and we get that bc is equal to 40 pounds 40 pounds. You could plug this into equation 1, which is the one that we wrote before, and you want to solve for AC, and you're going to get that AC is equal to 40 pounds as well. 40 pounds. Now, AX. AX is, you can do some of the forces on the axis equal to 0, and the only force in the X is AX, so you know that AX is equal to 0. So that's the answer for AX, for AC and BC. So I just want you guys to understand why you can't really do some of the moments because um, actually I had, a, uh, I had a student that was actually trying to do some of the moments about the X thinking that you could turn the X. But like I explained, you can't really turn the X because the two forces and the way the assembly is set up, it would just twist this whole assembly. It wouldn't create any moment. So let me go back and say final answer for X, final answer for C, A, Z, and final answer for B, Z.